I like to use poplar. For this particular project, I wanted to use some pine cones and epoxy all mixed up. And this piece of uh, poplar had a pretty big void on one side, so it's kind of dictating my path before we even started. But hey, you know, when you start these projects, you don't know really where you're going to go from the very start. So slap this uh, piece of uh, poplar on the uh, lathe and had all sorts of issues and problems as this project unfolded. You're probably going to see around the 10 or 12 minute mark on this, these videos. I like to keep them short, but there's something like 6 to 7 hours worth of work in this. So look, sit back and watch this. I'll interject as we come along. Staying away from the text messages at this point and do a bit of voiceover. So sit back and enjoy. So about now I've decided to have a fairly large rim and I wanted it to be fairly thin so they can have both the uh, epoxy pine areas showing on the top and on the bottom. I wanted that pine cone epoxy embellishment on the top of the rim so the rim is going to be fairly wide as you can see that probably takes up a, a majority of uh, two-thirds of the bowl but I wanted that uh, epoxy area to be able to see through so the uh, epoxy I'm using uh, is a translucent um, uh, dye Just marking out where the pine cones are going to uh, fit and uh, making a few uh, push cut safety sticks for the uh, bandsaw. So I'm cutting the uh, pine cones in two. Uh, some of the pine cones are uh, completely demolished with the uh, saw blade. I get at least one half in, to be used. using the Let's Resin 1 uh, one to 1 ratio casting resin and uh, that translucent dye as I mentioned before overnight drying and curing and it's hard as a rock My go to turning tool for uh, epoxy is the carbide negative rake scraper Now my plan was to have uh, most of the bowl coloured, so if it uh, hadn't had the epoxy then it was going to have the acrylic paint. So I've got the Joe Sonia acrylic waterproof paints and that was the mistake. 
being waterproof and I was going to uh, finish the coating with uh, a one-to-one -one epoxy finish. The uh, epoxy uh, reacted with the acrylic paint and it was a giant mess. So you saw there the blue going on and you also saw there that the blue disappeared. Well, that's because I removed it after uh, nearly a day and a half of uh, curing and problems of trying to have the, the two materials gel together. So moral of the story, do not use acrylic waterproof paint um, and expect uh, the epoxy to uh, marry to it because it, uh, the two alien chemicals and they react to each other. The bubbles were just an enormous mess. I cut that out of the video, it's boring stuff. And as you can see now, I'm sanding it back and I'm going to eventually just uh, have the epoxy resin finish, which turned out pretty well. Quick tip to prevent those bristles from coming out on your workpiece, use uh, thin CA and uh, then the curing straight away and those bristles will stay exactly where you want them, not on your piece. Now for those of you who have been watching my videos, I generally like to put on a UV resin on the foot just to seal off that uh, badge and uh, just to make the whole thing, you know, epoxy finished. Um, the problem here uh, was the UV resin went straight onto an unsealed surface and when the curing started, um, there was a hell of a lot of bubbles that appeared and had to be redone. Moral of the story... Make sure you seal off the wood before using UV resin. Well, it's just about all in and the end's coming up. Got some uh, stills at the end here, of course. Now, if uh, you like the uh, voiceover comments instead of uh, just the text on the screen, um, let me know either way. Comments are most welcome. Cheers, guys. <laughs>